So as we discussed in the earlier sessions, the blood is propelled from the ventricles into the respective arteries. Now here we are having a look at the left ventricle continuing into the aorta. After the left ventricle has received all the blood from the atrium, that is from the receiving chamber and the heart, ventricle starts contracting so as to propel all the blood from ventricle into aorta. This time the cuspid valves are closed, the semilunar valves are open. After entire blood from the ventricle is pushed into the aorta, semilunar valve gets closed. Now, the blood that has entered the aorta and which is further going to enter into the arteries, it brings about slight dilation of the aorta and further arteries. The blood that is entering the artery, it exerts a pressure against the arterial walls. Now, this pressure exerted by blood against the arterial walls is what we call as arterial blood pressure. How do we go about it? See, when the ventricle has just completed its contraction, that is when the ventricle has just finished the systole, that time the amount of blood received in the aorta and further in the arteries is maximum. Then the aorta starts slightly contracting or pulsating so as to push the blood into respective branches. Every time after pushing out some blood it comes towards normal state, contracts again, comes to normal state, contracts again, this pulsation continues. Now, just after this is told, when the amount of blood contained in the aorta is more, the pressure exerted also would be more. And this is because of this systole of the ventricle. So, this is named as systolic blood pressure. Now, aorta will manage to distribute the blood that it has just received from the ventricle. And that will go on till it receives the next lot of blood. That is till the next ventricular system starts. But just before the ventricular system starts, the amount of blood contained in the aorta and that received in the arteries is minimum. This time the ventricle has undergone complete relaxation. The ventricle is in the diastolic phase and the pressure of blood in the arteries is minimum. This is what is called as diastolic blood pressure. The instrument used for measuring this is called as sphygmomanometer. That's the instrument used for measuring the arterial blood pressure. Systolic blood pressure in a healthy individual is seen to be 120. The unit is millimeters of mercury. While diastolic blood pressure for the same healthy individual happens to be around 80 millimeters of mercury. Difference between these two around 40 millimeter of mercury that is called as pulse pressure. Pulse pressure. These two standard figures or these two ideal figures are found in healthy person. When I say I am talking about all the other parameters also appearing to be normal standard. A variation in these figures, whether systolic and diastolic. It's possible under specific circumstances. Systolic blood pressure rising to 
anything above 150 subsequent rise in the diastolic BP also will be there it's called as hypertension or high blood pressure and systolic blood pressure falling to anything less than 100 and subsequent fall in the diastolic blood pressure is called as hypotension or low blood pressure let us have a look at the various factors which affect the blood pressure the first one that we can talk about is cardiac output it ideally represents the volume of blood which is propelled out from the heart in one minute and there's a way to find it out it is the stroke volume and heart rate stroke volume is the volume of blood pumped out from heart in one single contraction that is volume of blood pumped out in one stroke once a stroke that's found to be around 70 milliliters while heart rate is number of contractions number of heartbeats per minute and that's found to be around 70 to 72 a product of these two is cardiac output so this is around 5 liters that's one parameter now as we discussed all the parameters have to be ideal that means the cardiac output has to be around 5 liters for the blood pressure figures to be absolutely standard 120 by 80 a change in these can bring about change in the blood pressure now stroke volume which as a seen here it's supposed to be around 70 ml per now we need to understand that every minute 5 liters of blood is passing through the heart so total volume of blood in the body if it's considered to be around five and a half to six liter almost the entire blood is going through heart in one minute from that the stroke volume would change if any component of blood is less or more that is if water content in plasma is more if mineral content of plasma is changed if cellular component of blood is changed that is more of rbc's less of rbc's more of wbc's less of wbc's whatever if that changes then this volume can change so composition of blood would be one more factor which would significantly impact the stroke volume and consequently the cardiac output and further the arterial blood pressure secondly the heart rate it's supposed to be somewhere between 68 to 72 so let us take it as around 70 now 70 beats a minute is a standard heart rate that is rarely likely to change but then we have already seen that though the heart is myogenic there is some regulation of brain there is some control of brain over the heart rate so the 70 can change to 100 or 70 can change to 50 or whatever accordingly the cardiac output would change accordingly the blood pressures would change so the composition of blood and the heart rate and subsequently the cardiac output would be one major component one major parameter one major factor that can affect the arterial blood pressure let's talk about the other factors that can do it viscosity of blood thickness of blood see the blood has to enter from ventricle into the aorta and finally into the arteries that is possible at a fixed rate if there's a specific viscosity 
if the viscosity increases the rate of flow would be relatively lesser the blood pressure would be significantly affected similarly if the viscosity is less if the water content is more then the blood will be flowing with more of ease but that would again affect the blood pressure similarly the elasticity of arterial walls flexibility of arterial walls see artery has one full layer of muscles that is longitudinal as well as circular muscles would be there in that muscular layer which offer elasticity to it now appropriate elasticity is required for the blood pressure to be maintained this can change if the elasticity is low that is if the muscles become rigid if the arteries are rigid that case so result into hypertension rise in the blood pressure and if the elasticity is more the blood vessels are more flexible then the arterial blood pressure would fall that will lead to hypotension so with age this factor is significantly affected that is the elasticity goes on reducing with age resulting into hypertension whereas viscosity would be affected by other parameters that is uh, salt content of blood or water content of blood or cellular component of blood these are all the factors which can affect the viscosity but very importantly this can be significantly changed by certain hormones what hormones and what impact they have we will talk about it in the other session but currently these two factors we need to focus upon now elasticity is one major effect which can change the elasticity that is we can talk about atherosclerosis that is within the arterial wall there could be a uh, certain depositions see the cholesterol can be of high density or can be low density this low density cholesterol has a tendency to deposit itself over the endothelial lining that is the innermost covering of arteries innermost covering of blood vessels when it deposits there it reduces the lumen size available for passage of blood and that increases the blood pressure that affects the elasticity that makes the arterial walls rigid and results into hypertension high blood pressure so low density cholesterol or low density lipoprotein is found to be having an important effect on the elasticity of arterial walls and consequently on the arterial blood pressure as such these two their relative composition it's regulated by liver but undue fluctuation in the two can lead to serious consequences that is at times there could be blockages in the arteries and if such blockages are found in the coronary artery the artery which is supposed to supply blood to the heart then it can result into myocardial infarction that is what we commonly refer to as heart attack.